Uh, next talk is by Benjamin Zhu from UBC, uh, and he's going to tell us about, you know, <clears throat> again, back to twisted uh, materials, and in particular, double layers, spin triple value singlet superconductors. Please, uh, Ben. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Um, so uh, let me turn on the uh, spotlight. Okay, so uh, I want to first uh, thank the organizers for uh, giving me this uh, great opportunity to present on our recent. Uh, we still don't see the, presenta the presentation mode. Then. Oh, now yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk about this uh, our recent talk, um, a recent work on this non-abelian topological superconductivity uh, in maximally twisted. Uh, double layer spin triplet value single uh, superconductors. Uh, so uh, the manuscript summarizing the findings of this work uh, is available on archive. Uh, and, and this work uh, is, is done in collaboration with uh, Marcel and, and, and two of his students, uh, Shannon and Drew. Uh, and we benefited a lot from helpful discussions with, with uh, our uh, colleagues at, at QMI, O's, uh, Raphael and, and and Andreas group. Uh, we also had some interesting conversations with, with Andreas Schneider from uh, MPI in, in Stuttgart uh, in the early stage of, of this project. Now, today I'm basically going to talk about uh, Majorana zero modes, uh, which uh, probably as is well known among this audience, it's a particle uh, that acts as its own antiparticle. And in the context of condensed matter, uh, it was first proposed by Reed and Green back in the early 2000s uh, that such an exotic state can exist as an, a zero energy uh, excitation at the vortex core uh, of a spinless uh, chiral P wave superconductor. And in fact, there's a, a beautiful semi classical argument uh, proposed by Volovic that basically, because of the chiral, uh, this uh, non zero angle momentum of, of plus minus one carried by these uh, chiral P wave Cooper pairs, uh, one would always obtain a pi Berry phase around the vortex and, and that would basically get, get rid of uh, this zero point motion and, and pin down a state at zero energy. In fact, such an argument would apply uh, in general to all Cooper pairs with, uh, with odd uh, integer orbital angle momentum. It, it, it can basically be generalized to those and then one would expect a Majorana mode uh, in such systems. Now, the exciting part of this Majorana is that it's, it is shown to obey these uh, this, uh, non-abelian statistics, meaning the braiding of two Majorana would essentially be uh, identical to performing some kind of unitary operation of topological qubits. And that forms, forms the basis of uh, fault tolerant uh, quantum computing. Now, motivated by both the inch, the fund, uh, the, these uh, interesting aspects in fundamental physics and, and uh, practical uses, uh, there have been uh, worldwide efforts uh, over more than a, uh, more than a decade uh, you know, going on in, in, in the labs. And, 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 and there are also many proposals uh, proposing you know, that there are many uh, possible platforms for realizing this uh, Majorana fermions. Uh, however, most of these efforts have been focusing on engineering some effective spinless P-wave superconductors, given the, the, the lack of intrinsic uh, P-wave superconductivity in nature. However, uh, it, it remains an open question. So is it, is it possible for us to find an intrinsic topological superconductor, uh, which hosts non-abelian particles by itself. Now, motivated by the recent advances going on in, 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 in the twisted uh, uh, two-dimensional quantum materials that we, we have been hearing from many of the beautiful, beautiful talks in, in this uh, workshop. So there, this uh, basically, uh, I think about a year ago, Marcel and his students uh, uh, proposed this uh, simple but, but elegant idea of taking on two layers of copper oxides, uh, which would, uh, as we, we all know, have this nodal uh, D wave symmetry. Uh, but instead of taking a, a small angular twist as in graphene and these uh, TMD materials, uh, they consider the limit of, of a large angle twist of 45 degrees. 
And from the vantage point of one layer uh, of the copper oxides, uh, the D wave order parameter of the other layer is now transformed to an orthogonal uh, D wave symmetry. And it turns out that if, you, we, if we couple these two layers of uh, ox, uh, copper oxides, it, one can show that the system would actually want to develop a, a complex phase difference in between the two, uh, which, which would basically form the so-called, uh, which would actually spontaneously break time reversal symmetry and, and form uh, the so-called uh, chiral uh, D plus minus ID prime superconductor, which has a full superconducting gap and the, the Cooper pairs would carry an, a finite angular momentum of plus minus two. Now, this such a state uh, is known to be topologically non-trivial uh, and, and, and it has these uh, uh, topologically protected edge modes uh, 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 surrounding uh, this, uh, this twisted, this chiral D wave uh, system. Uh, this is, of course, appealing in a sense that because the copper oxides would, would naturally have a high TC and, and this may uh, provide a new route toward a, a realization of a true high TC topological superconductor. Now, the downside of this uh, nice story is that because of the even, even uh, angular momentum, which usually would uh, be associated with an even churn number uh, carried in this chiral D wave phase, the Majoranas would in some sense always come in pairs. And, and there's actually no symmetry that protects these uh, pairs of Majoranas from recombining into a usual fermion. And, and that would obey uh, the, the, the abelian statistics. So in other words, one cannot directly use these chiral D wave superconductors uh, for uh, the, the, this application for uh, quantum computing. Now, but motivated by this uh, nice scheme of, of angular twist to engineer these uh, chiral Cooper pairs, one may naturally ask the question, so what if we just uh, replace uh, these, uh, these layers of copper oxides by some spin triplet superconductors with, with nodal P wave or nodal F wave symmetries and, and, and get some Cooper pairs with angular momentum plus minus one, plus minus three and so on and so forth. Uh, but, the, but again, that strategy would be faced uh, with the, the lack of evidence of nodal P wave or nodal F wave uh, superconductivity in nature. Well, on the other hand, uh, recent uh, advances in, in, I think in, in the study of two dimensional uh, superconductivity have uncovered uh, a, an a growing amount of evidence or promising signatures of a, of a spin triplet uh, superconductivity uh, however, as I will explain, this such a superconducting state is, is very likely to be fully gapped. Now, the first example is this uh, rhombohedral uh, trilayer graphene, uh, which is shown by a recent uh, experiment by Andrea Young's group at uh, UC Santa Barbara uh, to exhibit two of these uh, distinct uh, superconducting phases in this uh, two, 2D uh, uh, gate map. Now, in particular for this uh, SC2 phase uh, in, in, this, uh, in this region, uh, the, the normal state uh, where the superconductivity is, 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 is formed has a rather unusual uh, Fermi surface property in the sense that it is completely spin polarized and, and very unpolarized. So with this kind of scenario, one can imagine that electron pairing uh, would have to happen between the two opposite values, but with the same spin, and, and that would necessarily uh, imply a spin triplet uh, pairing state. And that is also supported by the observation, uh, the, the experimental observation that the poly, uh, the external, I mean, the critical field of this uh, uh, this SC two phase actually goes far beyond the, the usual Pauli paramagnetic limit. Now, and there there are theoretical proposals uh, show uh, suggesting that uh, such a spin triplet state would uh, most likely be associated uh, with an F wave pairing symmetry. Now, another candidate material with a similar scenario is the zirconium nitride chloride, uh, which is also uh, proposed recently by Prepal and, and Liang Fu, uh, that basically the superconducting state is also formed out of a two valley electron liquid. And uh, by considering some, some virtual exciton mediated uh, elec uh, electronic interactions, one would, uh, the system would develop some pairing instability uh, toward the, some spin triplet and valley singlet Cooper pairs. And, and, and they demonstrate that such a, such a Cooper pair uh, with a valley singlet uh, would, would have to be 
associated with the F-wave symmetry. Now to understand why in the context of a two-value liquid, the, this uh, spin triplet value singlet pairing is, and, and, the, and this F-wave pairing are basically two sides of the same coin, one can write down the simplest possible form of, of this uh, equal spin triplet pairing in, in a, in for, for this two-value liquid. And one can e easily see that the, the bobby bob the uh, Hamiltonian will look exactly like the, the usual BCS Hamiltonian with the S-wave uh, pairing. But the only difference is that now that the real spin is now replaced uh, by the value pseudo spins. And, and because of the fermion exchange uh, statistics, upon exchanging these two electrons from opposite values, uh, there should be a sign flip in the total uh, wave function of the Cooper pairs. And that in, implies that the, this, uh, this superconducting order parameter uh, would change sign as we go from one value uh, to another. So, and, and if, you, if we look at such a pattern uh, in, in, in the entire uh, blue line zone for, for this uh, STV as uh, spin triplet value singular superconductors, we will find that it would exhibit exactly the F wave symmetry. Now, the only, the, the, the important thing to note that is that since the, the, the F wave nodes are located along these high symmetry uh, gamma M lines in the, in the Bruin zone, they never intersect with these uh, disconnected Fermi pockets around the K points. So, so this, 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 uh, this uh, superconductor would have a fully gapped uh, spectrum. Now, although this kind of pairing is unconventional in the sense that it has some, some non-trivial F-wave symmetry, uh, one can actually see that such a state would correspond to a topologically trivial state because uh, the system would have the so-called uh, BD1 uh, symmetry class according to this tenfold uh, symmetry classification scheme. And one can check the table and see in, in two space dimensions, this BD1 class would always uh, admit uh, not a trivial topology. Now, the idea, our idea is that based on the fact that these STV and uh, superconductors would have the F wave symmetry. Now, if we take two copies of them and, 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 and make a, a 30 degree twist, essentially we are also getting two, two orthogonal uh, F wave components. And if we superimpose these two, um, is it possible for us to get a chiral F wave superconductor with uh, angular Cooper pair carrying angular momentum plus minus three and that uh, hopefully under some proper conditions, one would be able to get these uh, non, non abelian Majorana modes. Now, the answer is, is definite. Uh, and while it, it takes a, a, some extra twists uh, before we get to the final destination. So the first thing uh, that I, I want to draw to uh, your attention is that there is a key difference uh, between the twisted Q praise and, and the case of, of these uh, uh, STV as superconductors. Now, in the twisted Q praise, uh, we know that we have a basically a connect some connected Fermi surface around the gamma point of the, the Bruin zone, and, and and we have naturally have these uh, nodal points as we go around uh, the Fermi surface. And in in fact, uh, one of the argument that that was used in in in, in studying the chiral phase in the twisted Q praise is that by introducing this complex phase difference, one is essentially adding a mass term uh, at these uh, Dirac points in, 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 in both layers of these, uh, the, these uh, copper oxides. And the system will actually want to develop this complex phase such that these nodal points are gapped out and, and, and that is more uh, energetically favored. So the system wants to spontaneously break, break time reversal symmetry and get, get to this, this uh, chiral topological phase. However, uh, in the case of this uh, STVS uh, superconductors uh, with the F wave symmetry, uh, it, there's no nodes uh, to start with in each layer. And one cannot use a similar argument based on these nodes uh, in, in the bob uh, excitation spectrum uh, to argue for, for, this, uh, for the emergence of the chiral phase. Another key difference uh, is that in twisted Q praise, because the Fermi pockets are basically around a gamma point and one can show that the leading order interlayer coupling in this case would basically be the, the one that preserves the momentum and one can treat it as a constant. And, and basically one can just use a, a simple two parabolic band model 
uh, to, to model, uh, to study the energetics governing the, the, the chiral phase in, in this, uh, this the cuprate case. And the Moray band folding effects, as long as, as they are far away from the Fermi energy and one can, one can actually make black holes. Now in, in these uh, SDVS superconductors, now we are dealing with states basically located at this, the borderline zone corners. And based on the lessons we learned from this uh, Bis Bischitzer McDonald model for the small angle twisted graphene, we know that there are some non-zero momentum transfer in, for, for the, the interlayer tunnelings um, for, uh, for these states at the K points. And also that, that are expected to generate some, some Moray physics. Although in this case, uh, now we, we are talking about a large uh, twist angle limit. And I should add that because we are now considering at this uh, large twist angle limit, the, the valleys there are now, so for example, if we take the valley of one layer, it is situated almost midway in between two the two different valleys from the other layer. So in this case, if we, we, we can imagine if we turn on the interlayer coupling, this, the valley, the, the states in one, one valley on, on layer one would couple in general to both valleys uh, from on the other layer. So this would mean uh, a strong inter-valley hybridization. So this would be very different from the case of a small angle limit where one can assume that the, the interlayer coupling processes happen within only one valley and there's the so-called uh, valley conservation symmetry. So that actually tells us that the Bistritz and McDonald type continuum model would fail to describe uh, this large angle uh, limit. Now, for us to construct a reliable model for this uh, twisted uh, STVS superconductor, uh, we first, uh, for each layer, we, we just consider a triangle lattice model, uh, which is basically uh, motivated by the observation that states involved in this STVS pairing, they essentially live on a, a triangle lattice. And to capture these more complicated interlayer tunneling processes I just mentioned, uh, it turns out that we there are some literature uh, available uh, that we can, basically there's this paper by Moon, Koshino and Sun et al uh, back in 2019, and they show that one can formulate uh, this uh, general interlayer coupling in terms of the so-called uh, dual momentum space lattice. So in the interest of time, I'll skip the details of this and, and refer uh, uh, to, our paper for more, more details for those interested. But essentially one can, based on this model, one can reliably uh, capture all the leading order interlayer process and, and actually derive um, the Moray bands uh, of this uh, twisted double layer at this uh, maximal twist. Now, uh, with that, uh, with that uh, dual momentum space model, uh, we are able to study how the Fermi surface uh, would evolve in this uh, maximally a twisted double layer. So for comparison, uh, I'm showing here on the left panel, uh, the, the Fermi surface and the decouple bilayers layers with the, 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 the Berlin zones uh, rotated uh, uh, by uh, 30 degrees. And, and here I'm showing the Fermi surface obtained by this, uh, this microscopic model uh, for this uh, twisted double layer. So at a relatively low doping, uh, we see that the Fermi pockets, they remain well isolated from each other. And the same thing happens basically in, in this uh, twisted double layer. Uh, but upon increasing the doping level, which would enlarge uh, the Fermi pockets around the K points, we find that uh, the, the K pockets in, in this, uh, in this uh, twisted double layer will start to, to, form, to connect and, and, and they form a connected uh, uh, Fermi surface contour in the, in the, in the moray Bruin zone. And if, if we keep increasing the doping and at some point, uh, they would start forming this a single connected Fermi surface, and 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 that that is basically a, such a process is enabled uh, by the Moray band folding effects for these states uh, in in this uh, large twist angle limit. Now, in addition to this uh, formation of this uh, single Fermi surface, we know that because now that the Fermi surface are reconnected, uh, and if we trace the sign of the order parameters uh, of, of of the F wave, uh, uh, the pairing on from one layer, say, uh, we will find that the sign of this this uh, order parameter would have to change as we go around uh, this uh, this connected Fermi surface. So, in some sense, that the, the the due to the renormalization of the Fermi surface, uh, we are recovering the nodes 
of the F wave uh, order parameters uh, from, from each layer. And with that, uh, uh, but of course, uh, to, to, to do this in a more reliable way, we actually uh, did a more uh, rigorous derivation. Uh, basically, we consider these uh, intervalley the equal spin pairing interactions. We assume those uh, to continue to be present in each layer, and then we project uh, such microscopic interactions uh, readily present in each layer to the renormalized uh, Fermi surface in the twisted double layer, and we calculate uh, the pairing instability uh, uh, based on these uh, these actual Fermi surface formed uh, in the twisted double layer. And in this way, one can still define uh, the order parameters uh, characterizing the Cooper pairs uh, formed in each layer. And, and one can uh, one can write down the, the, the mean field uh, pairing uh, in terms of delta one and delta two, which basically characterizes uh, the, the, the pairing amplitude uh, in each layer. Now, what is interesting is that by by doing uh, all these uh, rigorous uh, derivations, one can show that there will be, one would basically recover two of these uh, nodal F wave uh, 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 basis functions that, that, that is uh, associated uh, with the F wave order parameters. And, 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 and this goes back to a similar scenario as in the, as in the, the twisted cuprates. Now, and with that, uh, one can simply uh, write down uh, these, uh, these mean field uh, BDG Hamiltonians uh, in terms of these uh, Moray bands uh, in the twisted double layer and, and we calculate, uh, say, study the, the free energy of the superconductor. Uh, and, and, and indeed, we find that uh, for a twist angle very close to the 30 degrees, uh, there would, would be this uh, double minimum structure happening uh, in, this, uh, uh, in the phase dependence of the free energy so that uh, the system would actually prefer to go into this uh, this, uh, this spontaneously uh, time reversal breaking phase uh, with a non-trivial phase difference, uh, phi equal to pi over two in between the two layers, and that results in a, a fully gapped a chiral F wave uh, superconductor. Now, and, and indeed, we also did a systematic uh, investigation of, the, uh, of a more, more of a complete uh, phase diagram of this uh, superconductor, uh, and we studied that as a function of the doping level and twist angle, well, as you can see, the phase diagram here looks uh, rather complicated because of the, the complications of, of Moray bands and, 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 and et cetera. But one thing to notice is that the chiral F wave phase would extend uh, almost entirely uh, throughout the, the doping level range at exactly uh, 30 degree twist. And also, uh, we also find something similar if we study the temperature dependence, uh, we find that this chiral phase basically sets in uh, right at the critical temperature uh, of, of this uh, superconducting twisted double layer. Now, to understand why uh, such a chiral phase would be so robust at the 30 degree twist, uh, actually there's a, there's a simple symmetry argument. Um, now for a general twist away from 30, uh, the symmetry generators basically involved uh, are all uh, involving some, some, some uh, proper rotations. And, 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 and we call such a group as it's a chiral point group. Now, at thir exactly 30 degrees, uh, it, the system point group becomes uh, D6D instead of D6, uh, which involves an extra uh, symmetry, uh, which is an improper rotation uh, that's, uh, that is a 12 fold rotation combined uh, with mirror reflection about the horizontal mirror plane. And, and exactly because of this, uh, this uh, improper rotation, one can find that this, these two orthogonal uh, F wave components, uh, they will transform uh, differently under this, uh, uh, this improper rotation. Basically that it, it will map the, this uh, Psi one on one layer to minus Psi two on the other, and then Psi two back to Psi one. And because of the symmetry relation, one can show that the single pair tunneling term in, this, uh, in the free energy of the system would always vanish and then the only phase dependence uh, uh, involved for this uh, superconducting free energy would be given by the double pair tunneling turn of psi one square and psi two square, uh, psi two star square. Now, and that would translate to a cosine two phi dependence in the free energy. And that is exactly uh, what we found uh, in, in this uh, free energy landscape uh, of, of this uh, phase, phase dependence. Now, 
So, so, uh, and, and that explains uh, why uh, the chiral phase would, would be robust uh, at, at this uh, 30 degree twist. And one can further take into uh, the look of, of the representations of, of these, uh, uh, these uh, F wave uh, uh, order parameters. And, and one can show that at this 30 degree twist with the point group D6D, the two uh, F wave com components would form a two dimensional uh, representation. And that would mean that there would be generate and then they would have a, the same a TC at exactly 30 degree twist. So that is why uh, by lowering the TC, uh, basically the, the, at the 30 degree twist, both of these F wave components are uh, uh, readily, uh, they be become readily available. While for a general twist away from the 30 degree twist, uh, and, and there's the, the, these two uh, F wave order parameters, they would belong to two different e reps uh, of this uh, point group D6. And so uh, one would, upon assessing the TC of, of this, uh, this twisted double layer, one would assess only one component of this F wave function. Uh, and, and then one would need to lower the TC that the temp temperature further uh, to assess uh, the other component and, and form the, the, the basis of this chiral phase. And, and then after establishing this, this mechanism for this chiral F wave phase, uh, so here uh, I'm showing uh, the plots uh, of these uh, edge state spectrons uh, and, and the vortex core uh, calculations basically uh, contributed by, uh, by Drew and Shannon. Uh, so as we see here uh, in, in within this chiral uh, F wave phase uh, on, the, on the one of the, if we consider a 1D strip geometry and as we go from one edge uh, to the ball and to the other edge, we will find that we will have some edge, edge states uh, emerge uh, along these uh, sample edges on, under the chiral alpha phase. And in the bulk, it remains uh, fully gapped and, and there will be some counter propagating edge, edge states on the other edge. And, and one also, we also confirm that there will be a zero energy, non-degenerate uh, zero energy mode uh, localized at the vortex core uh, of this in, in this uh, chiral alpha wave uh, pairing symmetry. Now, I, I would also like to mention that uh, with when as, as the twist angle goes away from 30 degree and, and one would, uh, the system will actually prefer this uh, zero or pi phase state. And such a state is actually also topologically non-trivial in the sense that, um, so as we mentioned, because of the reconnected Fermi surfaces, now the, the, the F wave functions, they will resume these uh, nodal points and, and these nodes are actually character uh, characterized by some chiralities. So if we project these uh, these uh, nodes uh, to certain edges where uh, they do not annihilate each other, we will find that there will be a flat band uh, connecting these uh, these nodes of opposite chiralities, which is essentially uh, very similar to, for example, the wild uh, the, the Fermi arc states in in in, in wild semi metals that connects uh, two wild points of opposite charges. Now. Uh, in summary, uh, I, I, I wish to uh, point out that in, in this scheme actually uh, utilizes a, a new a twist angle engineering uh, uh, scheme to, to, to engineer an intrinsic and non-abelian topological superconductor. And one would form an unpaired um, Arana zero mode because of the, the single Fermi surfaces generated uh, by the Samori band folding effects uh, at this large twist angle limit. Um, and also I, I would like to point out that uh, based on this energetics, uh, which gives rise to this uh, two minimum structure in this free energy landscape, one can actually derive uh, the interlayer Josephson current phase relation that, that flows in between the two uh, coupled layers. And one can show that because of this, uh, this uh, uh, double, double minimum structure, one would get a, a, an anomalous uh, pi periodic uh, interlayer Josephson effect in between the, these two layers. And that would actually uh, serve as, as some, some uh, reliable probe for this possible F wave symmetry that is proposed uh, for these uh, STVS uh, superconductors. Uh, I think uh, with that, I will stop here and, and we'll take on questions if there's any. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Thanks so much. Beautiful talk. Questions? We have a couple of minutes for questions.
we ask you one, which I was wondering in relation to or in analogy with the case of the cuprates. Yeah. About the interlayer coupling here. We're... So Sorry, can you, can you... Can you... Yeah. yeah, what about the interlayer coupling? So, you know, it is a parameter that you can, if you could control it oh. as a parameter. Oh, yes. Um, here we are, uh, actually in our modeling, we, we just take the, a similar model as in, in the Spitz or McDonald type model uh, for, for this twisted bilayer graphene. And we basically extrapolate uh, the coupling string for those states at the K points. Right, and, and, and that, that allows us to, to basically incorporate that within, within our microscopic model, right? Uh, and then I think, unfortunately, because the time constraint, I cannot spend too much time on, on that uh, because the, 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 the model is quite involved and, 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 and I think uh, one can check our papers or, or that, that paper by, by Moon, Koshino and Sun for more details, but, but essentially, yes, uh, we, we can basically adapt the, the Spitz and McDonald type model to to mm -hmm. account for the interlayer coupling in this case. Right. But is there something interesting you can do, you can tune in between by, by playing with that? Uh, yes, I, I, would, I would imagine experimentally that is probably uh, still difficult. Uh, and, and, but but uh, on one hand, uh, on the other hand, I think uh, because these materials, they can, they, the, I mean, the, the electron density, they're, they're sometimes tuned by, by, by gating. So I think one way of, of tuning the, the interlayer coupling is, is to can maybe control used by, by the gates, you know, how, how the electrons are populated in, in these layers. And that is one possible way to, to tune uh, the interlayer coupling. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. <clears throat> Any other question? Let me see. I don't see any. Well, then, uh, thanks again, Ben. <laughs>